So hi, uh, I'm Marco, and I'm joined with Kang and Kaishan, and we're going to talk about our app, Witchface. So humans are considered super recognizers when it comes to faces. This means that when a face is presented to you, it takes typically less than 50 milliseconds to recognize that face. So for example, I'm going to make everybody stare at this cross, and then two faces will appear in quick succession. And you probably saw um, Barack Obama and Hugh Laurie. And you probably you saw that within 50 milliseconds. Okay, so this quick capture of face information is because we process faces holistically. This means that the entire face is immediately captured by the visual system instead of building up from its individual parts through statistical features. So for example, here with our dear leader, Justin Trudeau, some statistical properties that may be captured include the shape of the face in this kind of contour arrangement or the surface properties, the texture of the skin itself, independent of the shape. So you still recognize JT, even though I've stretched the shape to be unrecognizable. You still know that that's JT. This contrasts with other types of objects. So some objects are built through a bottom-up approach. So we recognize the individual pieces that make up that object first and then put them together. Faces work the other way around. The whole is recognized first. And faces are not only special in that regard, but they also have dedicated hardwired areas in the brain that you seem to be born with uh, for recognizing faces. Now, we know that this is important because we're social species. Yet about 1% of the population, either through developmental uh, anomalies or through acquired injury, have difficulty recognizing human faces. So we have three famous individuals. We have um, our instructor, Jonathan. We have the dear leader. And I don't know who this is. Um, I just searched famous actress, but whatever. And about 1% of us won't be able to recognize who these people are just at a glance. And this has huge problems. Right? If I'm told to give you know, a presentation and I don't know where Jonathan is, and instead I'm presenting this app to Justin Trudeau, that's going to have issues socially, academically, and also in the workplace. And so how do we solve that? Well, we came up with an app that actually forces the visual system to recognize faces. So this is called Witch Face. We upload an image, and the image is manipulated to try to train recognition abilities. So one instance is the background gets removed so that we can't cheat face recognition, right? We can't look at what is that thing behind the individual? What's their hairline like? What's their other bodily features like that we can use? It removes all that so that the person has to focus on the face itself. Other things like glasses can also be removed. This is kind of similar to how we used to fix, and I guess still do fix, bad eyes. Right? Some people are born with a bad eye, and the way we fix it is we force the bad eye to work by patching the good eye. By getting rid of all the peripheral visual information, we force the visual system to focus on what it's bad at recognizing. And we know that there's probably some plausibility for this in the, neural, uh, in the brain due to neuroplasticity. And this means that parts of the brain that are not wired for a specific task can be forced to uh, process that particular task. So by using neuroplasticity, we can recruit different parts of the brain to take over face recognition. So we're going to go over our demo shortly. Users can, we're going to show how users can upload an image, can test that image, and can also look at how they do with specific images. So I'll let the demo take place now. Uh, I'm going to stop sharing my screen. Uh, I'm the uh, I'm the, the the person that who can uh, recognize faces. So today I download the Witch Face app. Uh, first I upload a very famous singer's uh, face uh, because every time my friends start talking uh, talking about him, but I cannot uh, even recognize the, this singer from the TV. So I import this uh, image uh, to the Witch Witch app. Which face app, and then I just uh, type in his name, and there's a chat box ask me if I want to remove the glasses since this uh this singer this image doesn't 
of glasses, but anyway, I just check it and I submit this. Uh, after that, the image is up upload to, uh, to my image face uh, application. Then I can test myself with uh, some images I upload. And then I just type in the name. After that, uh, I can see the results and I can know uh, who, uh, who I don't familiar with. And finally, I can see all the uh, images I upload to the app. And I can uh, click into one of the image and I can see th uh, this person named Karen and, and the test accuracy for this image is, uh, is 18%. And there is also a confusion list. That is, uh, what's the uh, possibility that I will uh, recognize Karen for other for any other persons? Like I, I will uh, recognize Karen for a person called Remove. I can click into to see who is Remove. This this person called Remove, and as we can see, his glasses was removed. Is it? So, sorry. So here's the structure for our app. We have three interfaces which are upload. So on the upload, we will uh, send the image send the raw image to our image clip and the face manipulation. We will remove the hair, the glasses of this, like all stuff in this section and store it into the storage. And we have also the image selection model. In this image selection model, we will choose the, like half choose the test image, half image would be chosen randomly and half would choose like, depends on the like accuracy of the image, we will choose from the low, lowest to the highest. And the last one is the photo gallery, you can like, see all the image on the photo gallery and also you can set the confusion list and accuracy in the photo gallery. And for the future work, for the easy mode, we will like do our two alternative first choice tests. So basically we will have two name, two name and two face on there, of two face and a name on that and you will choose which one is that to do the choice. And we also want to implement other like future uh, for that. The, auto recognizer, switch recognition, uh, multi-phase detector, and the uh, drop-down menu. And for the clean enemy. Can we just skip this part, because we're done? Yeah, you can keep going. Okay. Do it quickly. Um, so in summary, what I would have changed if I did this again is instead of starting with a bunch of ideas, I would have chosen one very specific idea and a couple of components of that idea to narrow down from the get-go. And uh, uh, we will try to like start with a very easy component compared to the like difficult one. Since the first like manipulation would be difficult, we will try like if we do that again, we will try to put that on the like to the last. One. As for me, I will uh, start start from a starter code that will help us to skip some trivial parts and focus more on the key functionality. And I will also do some peer reviews uh, with each other. So we, we, may, we may make less conflicts on the, uh, when we program on the same functionality. Thank you for everyone, that's our presentation. Great, thank you. Um, uh, that's an interesting point you raised at the end. That's uh, uh, if I were, that's a good suggestion to add into um, the course, getting people to peer review each other. Maybe there's too many deliverables in this course already, but uh, I should think about that. Um, I really like the uh, introduction you gave Marco. It's, it was very clear and talked to, about the scientific background and, and uh, it was well done, maybe a little long, but uh, well done. I thought you were somehow going to link it 
when at the end when you started talking about the non-holistic method of uh, I guess you did link the non-holistic method of identification by talking about getting rid of the features that does make sense um, I, I think it's a really interesting app and you should you should uh, continue to work on it I think you should find a better way to demo it somehow the introduction and the demo didn't mesh as well as I would have liked I, I, I know that you've done something very interesting but uh, it didn't really uh, illuminate all the things you've done and particularly the taking away the features like the glasses and the and the hair and, and what's involved in that and so um, I would get you to rethink your demo um, I don't have much to say other than that because I, I do like the uh, the uniqueness of this app it's rare to see something they've never seen before uh, and it's also um, uh, um, got re it's it's based on some really good science and understanding coming from the specialists so it's great to see that's that's all I have Dan do you have anything yeah this is just a very general kind of thought-provoking question but you guys are using uh, some ML techniques that are pretty advanced um, if you had um, the ability to do even more advanced stuff maybe stuff that doesn't even exist or isn't possible like what kind of image manipulation techniques would you like to use that don't exist? Uh, so for now we can remove glass, but we cannot like remove a scar on the face. So if you have a scar on the face, like it's very hard to detect that. So if like in the future, we will think of that like a scar and other, like the, uh, like, like the uh, points on their face, like, like the pants on the face. Like so. Okay, cool, thank you. Great. Tia. Yeah, so in the app, when you were looking at uh, one of the, the people that you uploaded, at the bottom, there was a confusion rate. Mm. Yeah. Could yes. you talk about that a little more? What was that? So like, so it, you when you test, you may enter the Ronnie. So we will recall like all name you, that you entered. And uh, for the like high rate, like above 5% of the, like if you test 10 times, you have like one time of the wrong. We will recall that and put on the confusion rate, and we will also like compare our, the confusion name with the name in the library. So if we find the same name in the library, we will we will link the name to the like the the photo like the profile. So if you click the name, we will go to the like the correct name. So the number on the right was the number of times you incorrectly identified this person as so, the name. So so the n number on the right would be the like the like the percentage like of the total test on this image. Like if you test like total 10 times on the image and you have like one time wrong with that name, oh, it's just it will be 10%. Okay. Right, okay, great. I guess it's the same as confusion matrix that shows up in the uh, ML world actually, although the thing getting confused here is a human, not, a, not the ML, right? Um, I think that's neat. Um, any questions from anyone else? Uh, I actually have one. Sure. Uh, so when you're tra training to recognize faces, uh, is it is it is the does this process help train uh, help you recognize faces generally and match them to names, or if you train on recognizing one face to one name, is it only going to help you recognize that person? That's an interesting question. Ideally, we would expect a skill to generalize um, and not be specific to one individual person. Uh, I don't think that that's actually really been studied in the literature if uh, training recognition forces the ability to recognize outside of those specific individual cases. I would imagine it would um, because, you know, you can easily recognize objects of high specificity, such as a cell phone. You know what a cell phone looks like, even if you've never experienced that cell phone before, because you've been trained on enough cell phones that it can generalize, um, you know, to give one example. So I would imagine that training on, you know, five or six different faces, you would start to develop the ability to generalize. Um, it may depend on how closely similar those new faces are to the original training faces, but it's an interesting question. Yeah, it's a great question. Uh, it's the whole question when it comes to machine learning. The whole goal is to generalize, and so, um, and that's imitating the human ability to do that. But then, but then, this is in the context of something that was missing. 
Is there any idea what is actually missing, uh, Marco? Uh, there's been a lot of debate in the literature. In the past, people have thought that it was actually damage to the face-specific regions. Yeah. Now it has to do. People are thinking it has more to do with the the scope of your vision. So how much information can you take in within a specific like angle of degrees? Huh. Um, so like receptive field, it's called. Um, oh. So it's a little difficult. There, speaking of neural networks, there have been some interesting models in neural networks to try to replicate prosopagnosia, where they take a, a, a network that's trained to recognize human, human faces, and then they damage different layers that are more that are um, analogous to layers of the visual system, so early layers versus higher layers, and mm -hmm. see if they can analog the or model the, the visual system's deficits. Oh, very interesting. Um, that word receptive field is uh, also a word that has shown up in uh, in neural networks, actually. So it, 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 it's the one we think about, uh, about a piece, the receptive field of something that's looking, uh, uh, some element of the neural network, what chunk of the original input is it actually looking at? So I think it must be similar, actually. Yeah, there's a lot of overlap. Last year I was at a vision conference and half of the talks were neural networks. Huh, interesting. Hey, very good. Um, any other questions or comments from others?